Hello my fellow pilots and welcome again to another episode of Star Citizen FM. Episode 56. Star Citizen FM is your fan community source for anything related to Star Citizen, the community, or anything else in the verse that might catch your fancy. Star Citizen FM is hosted by yours truly, Dr. Hawk. So join me as I go over some of the interesting happenings that have occurred over the past week. So we've had a lot of interesting things happen in the last year. Some of them small, some of them big. But one of the small ones that I think goes unappreciated is some of the subscribers, like myself, who contribute a little bit of money here and there to Star Citizen every month. Many of our backers have recently started the second year of their development subscriptions, and CIG has been hard at work coming out with new rewards for the dedicated subscribers who have helped support Star Citizen so much in the past year. The biggest change for year 2 is that all subscribers will start earning in-game display items for their hangars and eventually elsewhere. Every two months we'll add a surprise item to your account. It could be anything from a unique fish for your tank to a futuristic toolbox for your hangar. These items won't give any special gameplay advantage and they'll be available to discover in the Star Citizen world once the Persistent Universe launches, but for now the only way to display them is by becoming a development subscriber. So there's a few new things that will be added for those current subscribers and those of you who might be potentially joining. On top of Jump Point, which most of you should be familiar with, the new surprise decorative item for your hangar added to your account every two months. I would really like to see some ship models, little tiny ship models, just pointing that out CIG. Access to the Vault, a collection of Star Citizen artwork that would have otherwise never been seen, includes Paths Not Taken, discarded concept art, and the vault also contains full resolution versions of all imagery used to create each issue of Jump Point. And this has been included before, but just mentioning for those who are not yet familiar with it. There will also be a catalog of Star Citizen subscriber merchandise available at times throughout the year, including the prototype ship patches and Vanduil size comparison poster seen in this post. There will also be the ability to provide questions for Chris Roberts' weekly Tin for the Chairman sessions and access to a subscriber-only forum and chat room. Those of you who are Centurion after 12 months will have your name in the game. They won't tell you where you'll find it, but if you subscribe for at least 12 months, your name will be located somewhere in the Star Citizen world. You also get VIP admission to all future RSI fan events, as well as priority reservation for Citizen Cons and other conventions. You will have website beta access, as well as a single-use 15% off coupon in the store, applicable on digital goods only. And finally, you will have a test pilot access badge, a single use token allowing you one day of access to test fly any of the five base spacecraft each month during a future dogfighting alpha test. And finally, year two decals for your ship. Ah, <sighs> big breath. Imperi Imperiators, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, you guys get a few extra goodies. You get all of the perks that the Centurion includes, as well as VIP admission to all future events. Basically, you have more VIP <laughs> uh, status than Centurions. You also have two copies of each digital hangar item, so you can share with any friends that you choose to, as well as the Van Duel test pilot badge, allowing you to test fly the Scythe during the beta test of the Dogfighter module, Alpha Beta. And finally, if you're an Imperator, after 12 months, you get to create a pirate. They're trying to populate Spider with NPCs and you will have the right to name one and create the backstory for their official Galactopedia uh, spot. CIG does reserve the right to edit any content created as part of this perk. And lastly, you get two you know, year two decals for your ship and an advanced test pilot badge, a single use token allowing you to day one access to test fly any available spacecraft each month during a future dogfighting alpha test. This includes rare ships and variants. The dogfighting mo module will launch with a selection of single seat fighters and add other ships with ongoing packages. Now excuse me as I take a quick breath about that. So for those of you that thought that being a subscriber was a complete waste of time, there you go, you have proof that it is not. It wasn't even a waste of time to begin with, but for those of you that need a little bit of physical or even digital bribery to get you going, why not? Star Citizen is a game that can always use more money. So, come on, throw that credit card at them and check it out. And besides, being honest here, every little bit helps. Giving them the money that they need to help develop the game is 
quite a big investment alone. You never know where that 20 bucks could go. So check it out, subscribe, Centurion if you feel like it, or just be a badass and go for Imperiator. So, let us move on to some other news articles for Star Citizen. Alrighty, and it seems once again Star Citizens have gone above and beyond with their wallets. Star Citizen has officially reached $39 million for funding. We are almost at $40 million, ladies and gentlemen. Again, give yourselves an amazing pat on the back and go down a beer while you're at it, because I'm pretty sure you've earned it at this point. We have reached another crowdfunding record, even though the team is hands down working to finish the dogfighting module. The backers are continuing to spread the word and make Star Citizen a success. To everyone who has joined recently, welcome. To everyone who has helped us reach this point, thank you. At $39 million, we have unlocked the penultimate user-chosen star system. The UDS-2943-01-22 system, otherwise known as that system with too many numbers. Breaking news, UEE astrophysicists based at the famed Clavs Observatory Station have utilized advanced tech te telescopy and other remote sensing technologies to identify a truly unusual star system on the fringes of known space. The object, once thought to be a single massive star, is actually a trinary star consisting of two white dwarfs and an active pulsar orbiting one another. Because of the complex gravitic factors at work, it is now believed that a jump point leading to the system likely exists in or near explored human space. Beyond the bizarre stellar makeup, the composition of the system is all but unknown. Could planets exist in this carefully balanced web? What else might have been drawn there? One thing is certain. The first citizen to travel to UDS 2943-0122 will have one hell of a view. I would also like to share some of the artwork of the UEE's new Javelin class destroyer. So for those of you that aren't aware, this was one of the new big ship reveals that we got to see. You may have caught a glimpse of the Javelin on this week's Wingman's Hangar, and now I'd like to share a closer look. The ship was designed by David Hobens. David has been working hard to create not just a cool exterior, but also an interior that evokes the crowded corridors of a real-world destroyer. The plan is for it to be modular, with parts we can swap out for different roles. Assault destroyer, long range something extra R destroyer, and so on. The Javelin is still in conceptual stages, but I think it's cool enough to share with the community. And I myself think it looks quite cool. It almost looks like something you'd find out of a ocean. Very sea, sort of mammal-esque predator-like, something you might find on a shark. Lots of sharp angles that evoke both modern world technology and just something of very predator-like. Very fits fits very well for a destroyer. Plus, I like the little helipad that they have on the left side for docking. As I said the last time, I'm very excited about our next stretch goal. Our previous stretch goals have been about expanding Star Citizen immediately, adding new ships, new systems, etc. Each one has added something to the game while allowing us to widen our bandwidth, hire more employees, expand our development, purchase new technology. Now it's time to look a little bit more into the future. Star Citizen isn't just about a game we launch with. We're going into this building not only an immersive launch experience, but platforms and the tools to let us keep expanding the game to meet the available technology. The game won't be a static experience. We want to build Star Citizen in a way that will experience that the experience will be fresh in 5 years, 10 years, and into the foreseeable future. Among the most common feature requests for Star Citizen are atmosphere, combat, and ground exploration. These are the single biggest things we would like to include in the game, but they're also something we know we can't have on day one. Our universe is a big place, and creating hundreds of existing landouts properly is enough of a challenge. Building entire continents and atmospheres in the current system would take a lifetime. This is where procedural generation comes in. If we can develop a truly great procedural generation system, one that lets us create entire planets for you to populate, then we can expand the game to add these features and more in the future. So our next stretch, stretch goal is a procedural generation research and development team. This stretch goal will allocate funding for Cloud Imperium to develop procedural generation technology for future iterations of Star Citizen. Advanced procedural generation will be necessary for creating entire planets worth of exploration and development content. A special strike team of procedural generation oriented developers will be assembled to make this technology a reality. 
Chris goes on to say, I hope you will agree with me to say that this is an exciting goal and that you will join me in this commitment to Star Citizen's future. Thank you for continuing to make Star Citizen possible and for continuing to help it grow. Remember the next time that when we reveal... <laughs> We will reveal the $42 million goal, which should be a fit if fitting objective for such an auspicious number. Sorry, I trembled a little bit there because of the $42 million goal. <laughs> it just, it's a very fitting thing to have. So if you guys want to see procedural generation, whip out those credit cards and help them out. Um, as long as it doesn't end up, well, no, I'm not going to bash games. That'd be a bad thing to do on Star Citizen FM. So let us move on to some other news articles and leave malice in the dust also we have a very interesting thing to go over now normally i try to leave wingman's hangar as its own entity as some of you my viewers used to know i recapped wingman's hangar but looking here you can see that the foundry 42 team has some things that deserve to be talked about we already have some examples of what the first area is supposed to look like the, the beginning mission area so to speak a sort of asteroid mining colony base and it goes on to show the different iterations starting from a very basic you know just a building slapped onto a to an asteroid to this very complex sort of um, I, I, the best thing I can come up with is like a spider web <laughs> design with cables and tethers holding different asteroids all together in this large massive complex uh, it should be a very interesting place to, as Chris said, dogfight around as, in, as well as protect and do your missions. The other thing that came up that was very interesting is that they mentioned a heavy emphasis on miners and mining in this. There's a lot of citizens out there and we can, you know, devolve into Care Bears and PvP, you know, hard-ons all you want. But there's players out there that don't really want to dogfight. They want to mine, they want to do their own thing. And if you check out some of the mining uh, craft that they have here, these large spider-like drones that actually look kind of terrifying when you look at them. It has been said by in this video, and you can go and check it out on the com link if you don't want to hear my commentary on it, that you could potentially get in these things and own your own and mine with them and you know make your living with one of these you know crazy-looking spider drones. So here you go, you have some gameplay examples or well I wouldn't say gameplay but some pretty cool examples of what potential gameplay could look like in Star Citizen and for those of you who have been worried about you know Star Citizen being just PvP only there you go you have a good proof of concept of what at least uh, they have in mind for the mining aspect as well as some other tidbits you know like turrets and other things that they have in mind so, be a good idea to keep an eye on Foundry42, and I will try to keep you guys updated on it. And if you'd like to see the whole video, be sure to check out Wingman's Hangar Episode 57. Uh, please do, because it's pretty, pretty damn awesome. Let us move on to some other things. And our final little bit of news that we're going to go over, uh, it's two articles when I'm going to sort of roll it over into one. The next great Starship, uh, Episode 4, is out, so if you'd like to go view that and look at some of the team building, as well as the other article I'll be talking about, you can check that out. For those of you who have made the next great Starship, by the way, from Star Citizen FM, I extend my warmest congratulations to you guys. I look forward to reporting on you guys and seeing what you guys come up with in the next upcoming months. Uh, as for the other article, for those of you who have already seen, or maybe have not, the Mustang has been revealed. This is a light attack craft that will be usable in Star Citizen and purchasable. From the looks of it, it's almost giving me the idea of some sort of, <laughs> I keep thinking, Batmobile, like the Bat, the Bat Flyer from Batman, whichever one movie that was. But as described by Chris Roberts and David, the gentleman who created it, it's a nice alternative for those of you who maybe got the Aurora or something else. I don't know when we will have it in game or you know, you'd be able to check it out in your hangar module, but definitely want to check this craft out. Really nice, sleek, sharp looking lines, a very aggressive profile. Although from its size, when I eventually get to check this thing out in the dogfighting module and start with the Star Citizen ship overviews, that'll be a different playlist for you guys in developing Star Citizen FM, um, this thing kind of does look like a glass cannon. I don't actually seeing it, see it taking a direct hit and walking away. <laughs> I actually think the 
Uh, the 300i would survive better than this thing, and the 300i is generally considered the fancy pants ship. So, what the Mustang will be capable of in the game, we won't know until we find out later. But for now, this is a pretty cool concept ship, and I'm looking forward to seeing it implemented in-game. And so there we go, ladies and gentlemen, another quick wrap-up regarding any of the events that have happened in Star Citizen. I have a few interviews lined up that I'm trying to get done, and we'll see if anything comes to fruition with some of those. But in the meantime, if you've enjoyed Star Citizen FM, you can always subscribe by clicking subscribe on the upper left-hand corner, or the fuzzy little hawk on the lower left-hand corner. If you've enjoyed my videos, I now accept PayPal donations. So for those of you who have donated already, thank you very much. And if you'd like to donate to Star Citizen FM and continue to see it running, you can do so at lucas.g.drhawk at gmail.com. And if you don't feel like donating, you can always leave me some feedback, comments, or even constructive feedback in the comments section below or in the forums. I look forward to seeing you guys next time for the next episode of Star Citizen FM. You guys all take care and fly safe. This is Dr. Hawk, signing off.